So let's say you have a blog post and you've decided you want to grow your mailing list. So you'd like to have an email opt-in pretty much on every single blog post on your website. Now, this can be a challenging task because you need to go into each and every post one by one and add your email opt-in. So in this video, I want to show you how easy it is to add your email opt-in on your blog post. But this time we're going to be using the DV theme builder. So let me show you what this looks like. So if we take a look here, I've added this email opt-in at the bottom of my post. So each and every post is going to have this email opt-in. So you may be thinking, well, maybe this is happening on just one post. Well, this can also work on pretty much all your posts. So if I make any changes to this, it will be applied pretty much to all my blog posts on my website. Now, before we get started, I'd like to remind you that if you buy DV using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my web design formula course, a course that teaches you how to design professional looking websites from scratch. All you have to do is to buy DV using my affiliate link and I'll give you access to my course. All you have to do is to send me an email or go to funnels to income.com on the bottom right on the chat support. Just send me your receipt number and I'll give you access to the course. All right. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing you need to have in place is to have an email autoresponder in place. So this could be MailChimp, ConvertKit, MailPoet, and so on. So here in my example, I'm going to use MailPoet. So you can see here we have uh, MailPoet already installed. And if I come over here to my lists, we can see that I have my first list here, WooCommerce customers and so on. So I would like that when people sign up onto my mailing list, they're added onto my first list. So this is what I'm going to use to add all my subscribers to that list. Okay, so now that I have that in place, the next step now is to head over and create our opt-in. So I'm going to go to Divi all the way down here. And then I'm going to go into Theme Builder. Now, it's very important that everything here is done in the Theme Builder because once we make all our designs in there, they'll be applied across the whole website. So just to show you what things look like before we make any changes, this is our main landing page or our main post, you can see on the bottom here, there's nothing. Uh, there isn't any uh, opt-ins. So this is what we need to create right now. Okay, so over here now, I'm going to go into custom body. Now, this is where we need to make these designs. Okay, so I'm going to come all the way down here and we are going to add a brand new section. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, click on regular, and this is going to be a single column. And in that column, we're going to add an email opt-in. There we go. So now we have an email opt-in right there on the bottom. So what I usually do when I design on my template here is to, let's remove this background color. Okay. And to remove it, you can just say use background color. Right now it's set to yes. We just want to get rid of that. Okay. So now my background is gone. And you may be thinking, well, all the text is gone. All the data is gone. Don't worry, because what we need to do here is to add a background color. And this is what's going to act as our color and everything above it is going to show up correctly. So I'm going to use, uh, let's see what color could we use here. I've used a dark gray there. So I could really go with, I could go with something like that. That could work. Okay. So uh, in fact, you know what? Let's just uh, bring this down a little bit. This is a bit too bright. Right, so I'm happy with this color now, and that is for my section. So the next step now is to come over here and work on my design of this email opt-in. Okay, so over here, I'm going to go into design, layout, and I want to have my body on top, a form on the bottom. So notice what happens when I do that. So you can see now that all my text has been changed. Now, I can see clearly where I need to make all my changes to. So for example, over here, I can say on my text, I could say download my travel guide. Okay, let's do that. Uh, download my travel guide. Excellent. So now we have our title. Let's go in and change that heading. In fact, you know what? We might as well go into changing all these headings once we have added all our content. Next, I'm going to go to Lorem2. This is the site I use to just copy my dummy text because my typing is really bad. I need to work on that. Okay, so back over here, I'm going to paste my text in here like that. 
So that becomes my description text. Now I would like everything all centered. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come over here to design and uh, let's go to our text here and center it. We are also going to change this to, let's go to our title text. Is this right? Yes. I'm gonna change this to Poppins. And uh, let's make this semi bold. And now let's go to our description text here. And we're gonna change it from a default here to Poppins. I'm gonna increase the size a little bit. There we go. Uh, I think 16 looks okay. Now we can play around with these fields now, okay? So this is where we can go in and customize all our fields. So what I'm gonna do now is to go to my email op uh, opt-in here and I'm gonna go to email account. So this is where the action begins. So over here, I'm gonna choose my email provider. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna choose MailPoet and I need to select my list. So I'm just gonna click here on add and let's add an account name. I'm just gonna call this Mac. I'm gonna hit submit. Okay, so here's my first list. Remember when I showed you earlier on, I had three different lists. One was WooCommerce, WordPress users, and my first list. So here it is. That's my first list. So that has been added. Over here on the fields, if I want to disable the last name, I can just disable it up by just doing that. And also if I need to remove the first name, I can just remove it by doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my first name on there and then I can further customize this form if I need to make further changes to it. So I can come over here, fields form, background color. I can set this to transparent and fields text color. I can set this to make it easier to read. I can just set it to a light gray like that. Fields focus background color, white. I don't know, I'll just leave it like that. To be honest, I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, working on this. Uh, next, uh, let's go to our borders here. So I'm gonna go to border, add, doing it on the wrong thing. Let's go to our fields. So what we need here is the fields border. There we go. Right, so here on the border, I'm gonna set this to two and let's add our color here. Now you can see this is very similar to our button. So let's go ahead and change our button here. So I'm gonna go over here, activate use custom styles for button. So this allows me now to change my button. So over here on my button background color, I can change that and I can just use a complementary color here to make it really stand out. Okay, so now that I added that, I can remove my border width because I don't really need that to be honest. Or if I'm going to have a border width, I can add it like that and just add my color so that it just looks like one big button. Okay, so now that I have this pretty much, I'm happy with my opt-in. I can save this now. And this is a bit too wide, so I can go into my row settings here, click on design and let's go to sizing. Okay, right now it's on 70%. Let's bring it down to about 60. I'm gonna save that. And that looks much better. It's still quite wide, but uh, I can live with that. Uh, let's do a little bit. Okay, so back over here. No, I don't need spacing, I need sizing. So let's bring it down to about 54. Okay, so now I'm gonna save. And I'm happy with this now. Save one more time and then I'm gonna close out of here, save all changes. Now, this is the before where we didn't have anything on here. And now if I refresh this, and when I scroll all the way down, you can see now we have an email opt-in. Now the great news about this uh, way I've done it is this applies to all your blog posts on your website. Don't believe me? Let me show you. If I come back over here, go to all posts, uh, where are my posts? Okay, all posts. Now, let me show you what that looks like. So I have this uh, post one here. So if I click on view, notice what happens. If I scroll all the way down. There we go. So this gets applied pretty much across the whole website. And this is how you set up your email opt-ins for your blog posts across your whole website. All right, so pretty much that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell notification. By doing so, you'll be notified when new tutorials are released. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.